Tesla's production is going gangbusters, and of course their order book is beyond what they can even fill, even with production ramping. But eventually Tesla is going to need to produce a less expensive vehicle to reach the masses in order to transition the world to sustainable energy. Or do they? Let's take a look. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So let's start with the sort of facts right now. Tesla is aiming to have a 2 million car per year run rate by the end of 2022. Right now they're in the upper 1.8, 1.9 million cars per year run rate. Again, they're not gonna produce that many this year in 2022, but the goal is to be hitting that at the end of 2022. So if they just stopped and didn't ramp any further, that would mean in 2023 they would produce 2 million cars, but probably it's gonna be more like 2.5 million or so. Anyway. Wait, they're producing a lot of cars, you know. If you look at like a Toyota or a Volkswagen, they're making in the order of eight to 10 million, but Tesla is getting to like a fifth of that number, and it's pretty remarkable how quickly they've grown that. What's of course even more remarkable is the fact that Tesla has orders that stretch out beyond what they can produce at this point. As has famously been noted, one of the Model 3 variants has actually been taken off the table until 2023. And of course, with Biden in the United States signing the Inflation Reduction, or as Stephen Mark Ryan calls it, the Inflation Induction Act, <laughs> it seems very unnecessary for Tesla. But anyway, it looks like they're going to get a $7,500 tax credit once again, which has not been in place for many years for Tesla since they passed the 200,000 vehicle mark, I think at the end of 2018, or maybe it was 2019. Anyway, it was several years ago when they passed that. So they couldn't get that credit anymore, and now it looks like they'll get it again, which means that they'll even have more demand because effectively the cars will become somewhat cheaper. Although most people, me included, think that they'll probably raise the prices to sort of offset that so it'll keep the demand relatively the same. So obviously in the short term, Tesla has no problem selling every car they make. And of course they've got an order book of like somewhere around 1.4, 1.5 million cyber trucks on order at this point. So they've got a huge order backlog for their only other consumer facing product at this point. And of course they have a very large backlog for their semi truck as well. So the blocks at this point are manufacturing because obviously it costs a lot. There's a lot of resources involved in manufacturing Manufacturing, but more particularly batteries are a significant issue to Tesla's ability to continue to scale. Now Tesla says they have enough batteries to actually do what they expect to do in 2022, but without a significant 4680 ramp and also probably more batteries from partners, they won't be able to continue to ramp into 2023. And if you think about the Cybertruck, which is going to require a ton of batteries and the semi-truck, which is going to require a lot of batteries, way more than the Cybertruck, you've got two products that are coming Coming out that are going to be sucking down a ton of batteries. So in short, in the near term, Tesla is so supply constrained, particularly with batteries, that it really doesn't make an awful lot of sense for them to introduce a less expensive car. However, their mission very clearly states to transition the world to sustainable energy. And in order to transition the world, you can't have vehicles that start in the mid to upper $40,000 range in the United States or whatever the equivalent is in the rest of the world. That's a ton of money that a lot of people simply can't afford uh, the sticker price, right? Whether or not it's a lot cheaper to operate and it is very much cheaper to operate, that sticker price issue is just something that's going to keep a lot of people back from being able to order Teslas ever. So the the obvious solution and something that Tesla announced a couple of years ago at this point is that they're looking into a less expensive vehicle. At the time they were talking about a $25,000 car, we will never see that because of inflation and other things. But let's put it on the order of $30,000 or approximately a well outfitted Toyota Camry cost. So they're looking at price parity and by the way the Camry is the most popular car in the world as far as I know. At least the last I checked that was the case. But anyway, so you're looking at something that's approximate price parity. Upper 20,000s, around $30,000 for not the absolute base model Camry, but one that's well outfitted with a bunch of features and things. So that's what you would be looking for for an equivalent. And what that will do is allow most people who can afford new cars to be able to afford a Tesla. And so one would think in order to transition the world to sustainable energy, that's going to have to happen. The question then would become when. And that's actually a really intriguing question because with all the supply chain issues and with battery minerals, components, manufacturing, et cetera, you know, all of that stuff is having to ramp up and it's not there yet for not just Tesla but for the entire industry there's a kind of a lag and you would think somewhere in the middle of the decade 2025 2026 
might be the time when they might have enough batteries and they might have gone through and saturated the market that can afford the more expensive vehicles, that that would be approximately the time that Tesla would want to release this. And again, you could be looking at a car that might have 50 kilowatt hours of battery pack as opposed to like 80-ish kilowatt hours of battery pack. So you would be saving a big chunk of battery per vehicle so you could manufacture these less expensive vehicles and make more of them with the same amount of batteries. Now, of course, they will be less profitable per car because if you're making 15,000 plus on a $60,000 car, on a $30,000 car, even at that same percentage, you're only gonna be making seven or $8,000 of profit. But of course, hopefully you would make it up in volume because you would sell two or three or four or 10 times more of those kinds of vehicles. So eventually it seems to make sense that Tesla will make a less expensive car in order to fulfill their mission to allow more and more people to drive sustainable vehicles. But wait, and here's the wrinkle. I see Tesla as not really releasing that car, and I've said this before, but I want to be very specific. In order to transition the world to sustainable energy in the most efficient way possible, the obvious solution is to manufacture robo-taxis rather than sell these vehicles to consumers. Now, this is completely predicated on full self-driving becoming level four autonomous. In other words, under most circumstances, it can drive itself and getting regulatory approval of that fact. And obviously without that, you can't have robo-taxis because you can't have a car that drives itself if it's not allowed to drive itself. And this is, I believe, why Tesla has been so coy about their next product for so long. I think they really, really want to announce a robo-taxi, but they have to get the software to a state where Elon Musk at least personally believes that it is on a trajectory to get to full self-driving within a very limited time frame. Now, remember, he said that he believes it's going to be better than the average human driver by the end of this year, which we are now, what, September, October, November, we're now four months away from the end of the year. So that's not much time left. I haven't seen the 10.69 release. I hope I will get the 10.69.1 release, and that will probably be a major data point to show what their trajectory is. But assuming we can get to this point, let's say at the end of 2023, it actually is level four compatible. That would mean that maybe by the end of 2024-ish, like a year or so after, we might get regulatory approval. And I'm trying to be reasonably conservative. Some governments, some city governments might actually give them regulatory approval much, much more quickly than that. But let's be conservative. So by the end of 2024, if they got regulatory approval in a large number of cities or areas to operate this fleet of vehicles autonomously, that would allow Tesla at present to just build out more Model 3s and Model Ys and Cybertrucks potentially and just drive those vehicles. But what they could do is they could then manufacture a vehicle that is specifically built not for human beings and not to sell to consumers. And if you haven't caught this yet, I did a video years ago about the Model 2, what I called that. Elon said it will not be called that. Whatever it's called, the less expensive car, I believe they're going to make a stainless steel exoskeleton like the Cybertruck. It'll be a smaller version of it, very polygonal. I think that the Cybertruck is kind of a pathfinder for them. I, you know, again, I'm going out on a limb and speculating on this. There's no evidence of this whatsoever. But I believe that that is the obvious thing to do. You don't have to paint the vehicle. It can't really get damaged on the outside. Outside. If you use bulletproof glass and stainless steel, you've got a vehicle that's pretty impervious to most everything, which is a perfect type of taxi vehicle. And of course, if companies like Hertz or Uber or whoever purchases these vehicles, they can very easily put their own logos on the outside of these stainless steel vehicles to make them their own. But I personally think in the short term that Tesla will actually keep these vehicles themselves. It'll be sort of like the Tesla bot. Eventually, they'll sell this to other commercial interests and then to consumers. And yes, they might eventually sell this to consumers the robo taxi I'm talking about. But what they'll do at first is they will keep it themselves and they will take on all the risk and get all the reward themselves for a period of time and then start to expand it out to other groups of people. So if you're waiting for that inexpensive Tesla vehicle, I actually don't think it's coming. If it is coming, it'll be middle of the decade, so at least three years from now, just because they don't have enough batteries to make this happen. But you have to manufacture so many fewer robo taxis than for consumers. So if a consumer uses a car 10% of its 
minutes day, right? So they drive it 10%, and that's actually pretty generous. Most people use it less than that. But anyway, if you use it 10% of the day, whereas a robo taxi could be used 70% of the time and 30% it's getting maintenance and charging, then you're looking at a 7X reduction in the number of vehicles on the road. And that's how Tesla deals with the battery problem. So instead of having to manufacture 21 million vehicles, you might only have to manufacture three to four million vehicles per year in order to transition the world to sustainable energy. So that is why I personally believe we consumers maybe eventually, just to say they did it, will be able to purchase them, but it's not going to be something that we're going to get our hands on soon. I really think that Tesla is all in on full self-driving and the reason they haven't announced their next product yet is because they're waiting for full self-driving to get good enough that they can announce a robo-taxi. They can build these vehicles relatively inexpensively, but not worry about exactly how much they cost because they're not selling them. They're utilizing them to make a profit all the time through driving miles on their network. And this is a win-win. This transitions the world to sustainable energy much more rapidly than they ever could by selling cars direct to consumers. It also allows Tesla to manufacture the number of vehicles that they need to in order to make this happen. And we consumers will get vehicles that cost less per mile to drive than owning a car and being responsible for the payments and the insurance and the maintenance and the garaging and all of that kind of stuff. So this is just a winner for everybody. And that's why I don't really see Tesla ever releasing a less expensive $25,000 to $30,000 car to compete with the likes of the Toyota Camry. What I see them doing is creating a robo-taxi that's just built to be a tank and to last forever and probably with LFP batteries, probably around 50 to 60 kilowatt hour battery pack, probably with only one motor in them because you don't need high speed. Again, no paint, stainless steel, single piece stamping, maybe the whole thing will be a single piece stamping, hatchback, et cetera, et cetera. That's what I see coming and I don't see us consumers being able to purchase this and I actually think that's a good thing. All right, I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it fun and interesting and thought-provoking. I, of course, would love to know what you think about this in the comments, so do let me know. As always, thank you so much for liking this video if you do enjoy it because YouTube's algorithm depends on that, and of course for subscribing if you want to see more of this kind of content. And a very big announcement, I am going to be in San Diego on September 10th and 11th for the Fully Charged Podcast Live event, I think that's what it's actually called, with Robert Llewellyn and a bunch of other people. I'm going to be on a panel with Brian from My Tesla Weekend and Lars from Best in Tesla, which I think is going to be a fantastic panel. So if you're in the area and you want to get tickets, I've actually got a discount code. Check it out in the description. Please do come, please do ask questions, and please talk to us afterwards. It'll be very exciting. It's very cool. I feel very honored to be with these two gentlemen and to be part of this whole experience. So please do check it out if you're in the area. As always, a huge shout out to my Patreon patrons. Thank you all so much for your support. A lot of my patrons are actually going to be in Florida on Monday. Unfortunately, I am too busy to go down, so I'm actually kind of hoping the launch gets delayed by a couple of days so I can get down there next weekend. But anyway, it'll be very exciting to see the SLS launch. If you want to join the team and hook up with some of my Patreon patrons who are going to be down there for the launch on Monday, just check out the link in the description and join us. And if you're interested in a whole bunch of really cool merch, check out our merch store. Link is in the the description. We have Tesla bot t-shirts, the Tesla meme t-shirt, success is a possible outcome, 4680 battery cells. All of that stuff is on t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, and on and on. So check it out. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200 and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Thank you. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how going shopping for a solar roof, a power wall, or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.